Good evening. Welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. So tonight on Whiskey Row, we're going to be exploring seven different whiskeys that are kind of different. They're unique. They aren't straight bourbons, not straight rice. They're not scotches. They're a little bit of everything. And we're going to look at them and give them a, a little bit of a taste. So first off tonight, we have a bottle from Virginia. This is actually from the Virginia Distillery Company. I am actually a huge, huge fan of this. This is delicious to me. It is a port cask finished Virginia Highland whiskey. Marrying whiskey from the old world with ours made in the highlands of Virginia, aged at least one year, yields a distinguished and complex spirit. Port cask finishing adds a nuanced character with notes of rich dried fruit, toffee, and dark cocoa. They actually have a couple of different uh, finishes that they do with this, but I like the uh, port cask. It's the one that's supposedly the best, so I've, I bought this and I haven't regretted it. It's actually my second or third bottle of this. So again, it's essentially a combination of scotch and whiskey. You definitely can smell scotch when you when you nose it. Nothing particularly strong or off-putting. Kind of nice and mellow, a little sweetness to it. it. Smells pretty good. I mean, it smells scotchy, but it still smells pretty good. Tastes like a scotch. It's got a really rich mouthfeel. A little bit of spice. You do pick up some of the dried fruits. I don't get any toffee. To me, the sweetness isn't really a toffee. It's more of a like a, a, a burnt caramel, like a charred caramel flavor. It's like caramel, but like a lot richer, a lot earthier and darker. However you can get it, if you're a scotch person, and you want to try something a little different, American-made, see what the Virginia Distillery Company is doing, then, then definitely give this one a shot. Next up, the great state of Texas. Some blue corn whiskey from Balcones. Oh, Balcones claims to be the original Texie with Texie. <laughs> so Balcones claims to be the original Texas whiskey. This is 92 proof corn whiskey made from roasted blue corn. The first Texas whiskey on the market since Prohibition. Baby Blue is crafted with roasted blue corn. Rich and oily corn uh, maize adds new sophistication to corn whiskey tradition. Intentionally youthful Baby Blue captures the essence of this prized corn. Had a little bit of it. Um, this, I've gone through a bottle or two, and this is, like I said, my second or third. I can't remember exactly which. This is my first bottle of this. I had it a while back. It's been a while since I've had any of it, but I do actually like it probably a little bit better than the um, the Balcona's Black Label uh, pot still one, the single batch pot still. That one's more expensive. This one, I think, was about 40 but I actually prefer the flavors of the, the blue corn one. There's a very kind of earthy nuttiness, very kind of roasted nuts, not a, like a candy nut, but very kind of a, a roasted salted nut. It's got some sweetness too. It's kind of a, almost like a vanilla cream on the nose. It is a little more youthful. There's a little bit of a kick to it. It has a little bit of a younger taste. It is sweet. You get a little bit of some, some charred burnt taste uh, on the back of your palate. There's definitely kind of this sweet charcoal-y finish on this. It's actually really, really good. Even though it's fairly young, it, it's got some very interesting flavors and sometimes some of that stuff's hard to put into words, especially on some of these these odd blends that aren't traditional bourbons or traditional ryes. They, they get a little bit funky in some different ways. And this definitely does that, but it's actually pretty good. Give it a shot sometime. So up next is Clyde Mays 11 year cast strength Alabama whiskey. Now the Clyde Mays, Clyde Mays story is actually pretty cool. He was a, a bootlegger. Um, Ran liquor for years. I think he even got caught a couple times and in prison and all that. But he ended up going legit. Clyde May lived outside the law. He was a moonshiner by trade and a craftsman by heart using hand-built copper stills bottled at cask strength with the nose full of citrus, peach, and cedar followed by layers of dark spice, apple, and oak. <laughs> It's Alabama whiskey, but it is it's distilled in it's distilled in Indiana. It's bottled at Conica Ridge, but it's 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 distilled in Indiana. It is 120 proof, so it's a proofy boy. The Alabama style comes into play because what they do is uh, toward the the end of the uh, barreling process, they actually add spiced apples. Haven't really gotten deep into it. This is the first Alabama whiskey I've ever had. Don't know if I like it that much. It's got some very ooh woohoo. The nose is full of proof, hints of some spice. It almost has like a graham cracker smell to it. It's like hints of spice with this like kind of a, 
a cereal-y graham cracker smell. I do pick up the, some of the fruity and whatever else, but it smells pretty good. It's definitely got so that you can taste that apple fruitiness. Have you ever gone to Cracker Barrel and they have the, the, the spiced apples and they're like a cooked spiced apple? It's kind of that kind of an apple. It's interesting. I don't I don't love it. It's got some character. This 11, this this was, I think I paid like $80 or $90 for this 11-year one. It was actually kind of hard to find. I wasn't looking for it. I just stumbled across it one day. It was growing on me, to be honest. Like at first, I didn't love it. It was kind of like, eh, it's kind of so-so. I don't know about this one. Is it worth the price? Uh, obviously, this one was I paid a lot for. The Clyde Mays, they have a regular Alabama style, I think for like $35. Start with that. Don't jump to this one because I never had the other one. I only bought the expensive one just not knowing what I was doing. Next up, I'm going to go to out west, out to Utah, for the High West Campfire Whiskey. Now, this one is made with straight rye whiskey, straight bourbon whiskey, blended malt scotch whiskey. It's sweet honey from ripe bourbon. The enhancing flavor or harmony is floral fruity spice from a mature rye whiskey. The accent is made from a peated scotch whiskey. The proportions, top secret. Campfire is crafted from sourced whiskey... I will give this to High West. This is a whiskey that I would want to drink around a campfire. 100%. It's it's actually really good. I do like it quite a bit. So up front, just very, very, very faintest, faintest bit of peatiness on the nose. A little bit of spice. Very subtle. A little bit of dried fruit. I get almost like a hint of raisin. It's such an interesting whiskey. You do get the peatiness. Like if you're a bourbon person, the peatiness just jumps out at you immediately because you're not used to the that 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 taste. And then it's still really sweet like a bourbon and you get a little bit of a rice spiciness. It's a little bit of an odd duck. But if I'm out in the yard with the campfire or if I were to go backpacking, I want to take something with me. It'd be hard to not take the campfire with me. I mean, it really does taste like something I'd want to drink out by the campfire, especially as a bourbon person, because it has those sweet bourbon undertones with just a hint of rice spice, but then you also get that smoky scotch. So it's not at all like an Ardbeg or a Lagavulin or a Laphroaig or something like that, which is super peaty. It's just a hint of peatiness, but it's got that sweet bourbonness to it. I'm going to have to start drinking this more often. This is really hitting the spot today. All right, next up tonight we have... From Barrel Bourbon. All right, but from Barrel Bourbon, we've got Dovetail. Now, this won a lot of awards at different spirit competitions, the San Francisco Spirit Competition, some of the other spirit competitions that they've uh, entered it into. It's a whiskey finished in rum, port, and Dunn Vineyard Cabernet barrels. 124 proof. This is the sixth release of Dovetail, a marriage of spirits meticulously sourced, finished, and blended. Their origin, paths, and flavors differ greatly, but they come together in this harmonious and progressive blend. It's a bottled at cast strength so you can experience the true flavor. So when I first bought this Dovetail bottle, um, I didn't like it. Like it had all these awards and it came like really recommended from different people. It didn't do a lot for me. It's been open for maybe six months on the shelf and I haven't tasted it, but I grabbed it for this competition because of how well it's reviewed by others. And it would give me a chance to give it kind of a second chance. So let's see how it does today. Kind of a little bit of a, a very fresh fruit forward on the nose. It's a pear with like uh, some grape. It's like a grape and pear mixture on the nose. It's fruity. It's also rich. I mean, underneath that, there's like a syrupy sweetness smell. It smells really good. It's got a really good mouthfeel. A lot of cinnamon spice. It's very sweet with a lot of spice. There's a lot going on with this. You get a lot of baking spices and some cinnamon. And then it kind of goes to this like sweet malty cerealness. So I can get why connoisseurs would enjoy this. There's a lot going on. It's better now than it was when I first opened it. Next up is Redwood Empire American Whiskey. It's select lots of 11, five and four year old bourbon blended with three and two year old rye. Ultra smooth with unrivaled complexity and character. This bottling of our first batch of rye and bourbon whiskeys includes select barrels, of house distilled rye, our proprietary blend was aged in new American oak with a portion rested in wine barrels to create an ultra smooth American whiskey with notes of honey, vanilla, and caramel aged at least two years. So it's got a little bit of a dried fruit with some cereal grains, some a hint of maltiness to it. Oh, this one comes in at uh, 90 proof. It's very berry forward, a lot of kind of uh, dark fruits, raspberries. There's a bit of honey and vanilla to me. 
yeah, I get some rice spiciness as well. I like the Lost Monarch better from the Redwood Empire Lost Monarch. I like the Pipe Dream and the Lost Monarch better than this one. I don't really have anything negative to say, but it just kind of, you know, fades into the rest of the pack. So last up tonight is High West Distillery's Burai coming in at 92 proof. All whiskeys in this carefully crafted blend are a minimum of 10 years old and sourced from multiple distilleries. So I'm gonna skip the Jackalope story uh, for all of our sakes, but that's why High West created Burai, our proprietary blend of mature bourbon and rye, both favorites of real cowboys and sure to attract even the most finicky of Jackalopes. <sighs> Whatever, let's just drink some. I actually really like kind of the old timey bottles that High West uses. They've got a lot of like distortions and bubbles. Wow, that was a lot. I didn't mean to do that much. I do like the burr. I've had it before. It's it's a good blend of, of bourbons and ryes. Ooh, it's got some bubble gum. Yeah, some citrus underneath that. Some vanilla. It smells pretty good. Some spice. You get a little bit of spice there too. You definitely pick up that rice spiciness up front. It's got some good sweetness to it. Not a cinnamon spice, though. It's definitely just like a clovey baking spices. Hint of cinnamon. Not like a cinnamon bomb, though. It's got some sweet vanillas. It's got a good long finish. It tastes a lot proofier than it is. I mean, this is only 92 proof, but it comes across as more like 100 proof, 105 proof kind of thing. I really have this kind of thing where the first time, you know, I'm buying something, I'm willing to chase it a little bit to get it, to try it, to experience it for the first time. But if I've already experienced it once, I'm not gonna chase that price a second time. So I don't know if you guys are that, I don't know if you guys are that way or not, but uh, for me, that first that first taste can definitely be a uh, something to run after. So I know I'm not doing this blind, but if I were to rank them, the order in which I try to pick them up, I'd probably go the Burai first. It's, it's pretty tasty. I would probably go with the, the campfire second just because it's such a unique thing and it has such a perfect place. Sitting around a campfire at night on a cool night. So number one, number two, number three with the Virginia Distillery. I'd probably say Redwood or Dovetail number four and five. The Dovetail is probably, if you like kind of a more complex, you know, higher proof, go with the Dovetail. If you prefer the um, kind of a more sippable, easy drinking, go with the Redwood. And then uh, these two in last place. Uh, all that said, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And until next time, find a bottle you love. Uh...